Hey everyone, it's me again and today I will be giving you an, um, <laughs> I was going to say an error, I'm going to give you a video on random versus systematic errors. So this is going to be, um, how is it called? I oh, forgot the name. This is going to be um, a series of videos and is going to be about errors and uncertainties and I decided to split into two videos so it doesn't get too big, okay? So random versus systematic errors today and then you're going to have a video about how you measure uncertainties and then another about significant figures and all of that is going to be on my playlist about investigating skills or investigation skills or practical skills, something alike, okay? So, how do you calculate, um, or actually today, what is the difference between random and systematic errors? So, errors mostly can come as one of these two types, random errors or systematic errors. A random error is, as the name says, is random. So, it happens just like that, okay? It could be due to many different things. I'm going to go to you to that in a second. But they are errors They are not consistent and they are non-specific to a certain cause. So you cannot reproduce that error. So it's called a not reproducible error, okay? Something such as reaction time. Sometimes you can take, let's say, 0.1 seconds to react. In another day, you can take 0.4 seconds to react. The, the, the other day or the same day later on. So is an error that you cannot recreate and you don't quite know where it came from. It could have been a measurement. It could have been a, a mistake as you're writing something down, as you write the values down. Okay. And these errors affect the reability of your um, experiment. Okay. Then we have the systematic errors. Now, these are in, inherent to the system or the measuring uh, me, uh, measurement or instrument. Sorry, the measuring measurement. Um, so I'm going to say it again. Systematic errors are inherent to the system or the measuring instrument. Something like having a zero error in your emitter or voltmeter or something um, that is wrong with the measurement or instrument. Well, I'm just calling them measurements today. The instrument that you have and um, is always making that that mistake or that error always goes to, let's say, to the left by two digits or two values or something like. So is a consistent error and is always systematic, as the name says. So it's always happening every time that you're taking your measurement. Um, as I said before, an example is a zero error and it affects accuracy. And in here on the top, I just took this picture from the internet, it's not mine. You have the difference in terms of pictures of random errors all over the place. You cannot predict where is going to be the next error and the systematic errors, which are more or less here. So I know, oh, okay, next measurement, probably I'm going to have them here. So they are kind of always the same. They always shift towards the same side. Okay. So now that I know that I have these two types of errors, how can I reduce them? Well, random errors, they shift each measurement from its true value by a random amount in a random direction. So it's a little bit hard to know, because I don't know, I cannot predict what they're going to do, it's a little bit hard for me to um, reduce them. But I can do certain things. I can repeat measurements, take them in and discard anomalies. When I do that, I'm not reducing the reducing the error itself. I'm not making it not happening, but I'm reducing the effects of the error because if I repeat my measurements, I'm going to have more chances of having a more correct measurement done in my list. And I can then take a mean if I look at the values and I have one that is completely off, I can see that that's going to be a dis an anomaly and disregard or discard that anomaly, okay? In terms of systematic errors, now they always shift measurements from their true value by the same amount in the same direction. So then it's easier to predict and it's easier as well if I know where the error is to actually uh, try to make that their effects are not as seen. I can then shift all my measurements if I want at the end. But the way to reduce it is to calibrate the equipment or the source of error because it's always due to a certain thing that is wrong in the whole apparatus, in the whole system. 
um, and is always making the error going in a direction in by the certain amount, right? By a certain amount. So if I calibrate the equipment, if I look for um, zero errors, any of these things, I can eliminate then the source of error. So that is it for today in terms of errors, random and systematic and uncertainties later on. Up to my next video. Be happy and healthy. Bye.